Hello, my name is Pablo Arias with International Relocation Partner. We specialize in international shipping for expats who are looking to move abroad. And every week we're trying to bring value and interviews uh, from other professionals in this industry uh, to help people to move abroad. And Mexico is one of the most important places where a people is looking to move abroad from California, from Florida, from many different places from the United States. People is looking to move to Mexico. And this week we have Mariana, Mariana Lane from Mexico Relocation Guide. Please say hi, introduce yourself, you know, tell us a little bit about what you do, uh, give us some background. Yeah, first and foremost, thank you so much for inviting me to your show, uh, for allowing us, right, to, to share our passion for living and moving to Mexico with the people that are watching this. Uh, so thank you, Pablo, so much for inviting me. A little bit about our company, you know, we, we uh, call ourselves the expert guide to living and retiring in Mexico the right way. And I say the right way because there are definitely people who make a lot of mistakes when they move to Mexico and mistakes can be costly because to fix them, it usually costs time, it costs money, and it causes stress. Uh, so the Mexico Relocation Guide was created to help people not only understand what you know, what processes they need to be aware of for a variety of different things like residency visas, how to get your pets to Mexico, how to bring your household goods, uh, how to find the best rentals, what scams to avoid. I mean, we cover a lot of information. Uh, so that's why we, we really talk about how to move to Mexico the right way. And, um, you know, we started this company in 2020, 2019, 2020, because I'm from Mexico. I was born and raised in Mexico. And um, and although I've lived most of my adult life in the United States, I really do understand both cultures very well because, you know, my, my families are in both countries. Um, but we started the company because we, my husband and I started talking about retirement in the future, right? And I think a lot of people will relate to this, that retirement seems like a really, really far, far-fetched plan nowadays. The cost of living in the United States and Canada and really pretty much anywhere else in the world other than like Costa Rica or Mexico or Panama or Nicaragua or these other Latin American countries seems really, really high. And a lot of people are going to have to work for the rest of their life because they can't afford to retire. So we don't want to be those people. We want to be able to enjoy our lives at some point. And we started looking into different countries that we might want to go move to where the cost of living is lower, but also where the quality of life is really good. In Mexico, obviously, is a number one obvious choice for me because my family lives in Mexico. I understand the language, I understand the culture, but I started realizing, Pablo, that a lot of information about moving to Mexico is just really out of date, really wrong, uh, really misleading. You know, a lot of a lot of companies that talk about moving to Mexico, they give a lot of like positives. They don't really ever talk about the negatives, promote the country. So that's why we created Mexico Relocation Guide because we want to give people like the real version of what it's like to live in Mexico. I think this is this is so important. And once again, I always say this, the reason for me doing this, I mean, I, I only, what we do in our in our business is shipping. We do, you need a 20 foot container, 40 foot container to Ecuador, to Mexico, to Panama. We can do, we can handle that. And we, you need a specialized company for this because this is often linked with your immigration status. And we handle this part. But oftentimes I get a call, an email saying, I have a big issue. Uh, I spent all of this money in this country, but I haven't to move back. Can you, can you, can you help me with the international move back to Canada or back to the United States? And when I dig into it, I built a relationship with these families. They really had a horrible experience moving, you know, moving to a place in Mexico or to a place in Costa Rica. And that, can, that breaks my heart. See somebody put all their savings, life savings into a project to retire into another country and then, you know, have a bad experience. Somebody may take advantage of the situation. Uh, there are scammers out there. And on top of that, there there is a lot of misleading information about living, living abroad. So this is why we want to talk to people like you. Your services are so important. Now, how affordable is Mexico and why, you know, I, I, we all know this, but I just want to give an idea. Yeah, I think this question comes up a lot for, I'm sure, your customers and certainly my audience. Um, because, you know, we've all heard that the lower cost of living in Mexico is one of the biggest reasons why people move. Um, and it, it can absolutely be very affordable to live in Mexico. You know, I know many, many people that live very comfortably paying their rent, paying for groceries. They go out to eat maybe once or twice a week. Um, so, you know, like, um, uh, it doesn't always have to be tacos, it doesn't always have to be street food, 
It can be like a nice pizza place, a nice Italian place, maybe a glass of wine. Uh, they can afford to, you know, go to the movies, go to different plays, go to different events. And a couple can live very comfortably on 1500 US dollars or less, right? However, it is very important to understand that it all depends on that person's lifestyle. So this, I know a lot of people that live on $1,500 or less, but you know, they're probably very conservative with their budget. They're not traveling all the time. Um, they probably don't have a very expensive private health insurance plan. Um, so it, we have to be realistic too, right? That those $1,500 is not gonna get you like this huge house on the beach overlooking the ocean with like air conditioning 24 7. it can absolutely get you a very very nice rental but maybe you're going to be further away from the very trendy neighborhoods right um so to answer your question it just depends on people's lifestyle and to the opposite or the flip side of that coin is we have a lot of customers that are not moving to mexico to necessarily lower their cost of living they just want to have they want to be able to afford a much nicer lifestyle with the same amount of money that they're spending, right? So if you're spending three, four thousand dollars a month in your home country, that can afford you a very, very nice lifestyle. In you know, that's where you can get the condo facing the beach. That's where you can get a a, a live-in uh, house people, right? That cleans your house, that cooks your meals, that you know does your laundry, does your grocery shopping. If you have kids, they might take care of your kids. So it just depends on that person's lifestyle yeah, this is this is a kind of like a kind of a good way to compare uh you know i have family who lives in california and i also know new york you know i was reading the other day the average apartment you know one bedroom apartment new york is like four thousand dollars california yeah. for 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 my cousin uh she recently moved to california for a job uh and she was just, like she was in shock you know so some of these cities in the united states could be very expensive. You're looking at three thousand, four thousand dollars for a small apartment uh, in Mexico. With that type of budget, you can probably get a house or three times bigger of a property, and even in a nicer, one of the nicest locations. So uh, th this is what we're talking about. You know, it could be very, very affordable. But what would be, you know, it's nice to know it's a good opportunity. But there are some down. There is a downside of living international. What do you think is the downside? What is the what is the bad thing about living? in Mexico. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize that, you know, so I want to I want to preface this right by saying like, no country is perfect. Like there's not a single country that's perfect. The United States is not perfect. Canada is not perfect. Uh, you, you name it, right? Like no country is perfect. But I think a lot of people think that, you know, Mexico is going to be this like rundown country, third world country always gets thrown out there, right? And I also want to show people that Mexico is not a third world country by some people's definitions. I know that the actual term isn't what most people think of, but I think people think like the infrastructure is going to be, you know, poor and, and there's not going to be any like running water and electricity. And it's just not the truth. I think one of the downsides, and that's just, I want to preface that by saying that like no country is perfect. Mexico, there are some rural areas, there definitely are some towns and cities where, you know, the infrastructure isn't perfect and there may be, you know, broken sidewalks or there might be like a really nice house next to a shack, right? Like it, it, there, there might be like corruption in the police force. Um, so there are these problems that exist, but I do want to say that, you know, no country is perfect. What people get in return though, is it's truly a free country. Like you're not living in a nanny state where everything is figured out for you. And what you get in return is that you get the low cost of living, you get a beautiful landscape, right? Mexico has some of the most gorgeous landscapes in the world. Um, there are many, 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 many cities in the Central Highlands that have spring like weather year round. Uh, there are also some of the most beautiful beaches that people go to every year. So it has a lot in return, right? And then, of course, the food. People love the food. Yeah, I was and gonna people, say that. And the culture, the people, right? Like it, it's a it's a country very much like other countries in Latin America. Although I do think that Mexico may stand out a little bit more when it comes to inclusivity. Like when, when you make a friend with a Mexican, they truly really become your friend. Like, I mean, they will invite you to their family parties. If somebody's getting married, you'll be invited to the wedding. Um, like they really, 
they really try to like embrace you, bring you in, include you, especially if they feel like you're alone or isolated. It's, it's very important to us that people feel included. Um, so that's, I think, the benefits, right? Another, one of the reasons I see a lot of people move back is because they're alone. They feel isolated. You know, they didn't realize how hard it was going to be for them to learn Spanish. And because of that, they feel like they can't they can't make friends um and they maybe they don't put themselves out there right like they don't they don't try to make friends because they feel that they have to be fluent or else they can't have a conversation with a local mexican and i just want to encourage people to just put yourself out there try it you'd be amazed at how many locals will actually try to practice their english with you and at the same time appreciate a lot that you're trying to learn your spanish so i think isolation is a big one um, another one might be, you know, healthcare. Some people move back because they didn't realize that their pre-existing conditions would negate them the ability to get private health insurance. And even though you can pay out of pocket, and it's very, very affordable to pay out of pocket, you can go see a specialist for about 40, 50 US dollars, and that's without insurance. That's not a co-pay, that's just paying for their services. And then ongoing treatments are a fraction of what you would pay in the United States if you didn't have coverage. However, I also think that people don't realize that if you have something catastrophic, like if you have a heart attack, or if you have, uh, if you if you break a, an arm or a leg, or you need something replaced and it requires very invasive surgery, it can be very expensive. And usually you have to pay for those things out of pocket. And for some people that's just like, it, they can't, right? They don't have any savings. So then they move back because they can get coverage in their home country um so those are some of the downsides see you know in, in just to add to this particular you know to this particular uh point healthcare to me you know i, I used to live in the states and i spent eight years in the states and i have friends where we had to call the ambulance uh bad situation my friend went overnight to a hospital two nights at the hospital an ambulance nine thousand dollars south carolina that in latin america I mean, here in, here, here, I'm in Costa Rica right now. So here in Costa Rica is like almost free. Um, yeah. in, in Mexico, I could imagine probably a couple of hundred dollars to two, three hundred dollars worst maybe. case scenario. Yeah, maybe. Depends on obviously the city or hospital you're going to, but it's very affordable. So it's, 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 it's 10 times more expensive to have something like that to happen in the United States. Uh, so it's more affordable. It's way less expensive. Uh, the issue just comes when you don't have the minimum savings for these things to happen. You know, the issue is the issue. This issue would particularly hurt people that may not have, may not be prepared uh, for something like this to happen. But it's you know, living in living in Latin America is very affordable, especially healthcare. If you have to have, if you have a pre-existing uh, pre condition. Uh, you know, getting insurance may be difficult, may be harder, depending on what country you're in. But uh, if you pay out of packet and you compare Apple versus versus Apple, uh, you will find out it's, it's a lot more uh, affordable. Now, one thing, uh, one question uh, I do get very often. Uh, no, it's okay. That's okay. That, that, that means that we are real and we have dogs. In the <laughs> Uh, no, one question that I do get, and I friends talk, talk about this, expats, you know, mention things, you know, ab about it, uh, you know, how safe or unsafe uh, would, would you consider Mexico? Can you tell me your, what, what is your, what is your feedback on this? You know, is it safe? Yeah, I'd love to talk about this. I would say that the media does a really good job, right, of making mm -hmm. Mexico seem like it's a war zone and basically anybody who goes there will get kidnapped and murdered like if you if you look up if you google mexico news like you will see you know probably 10 articles that talk about the latest cartel shootout between two cartels fight, fighting each other um and it seems right like mexico is the most dangerous place in the world but once you actually live in mexico you will realize that the media does a really good job of sensationalizing that. And 99% of residents, or maybe 90% of residents, because cartel does pick up a lot of residents. Um, I, I do think that most people live very comfortably. They're never exposed to a shootout. Their, you know, their houses aren't necessarily broken into. 
they don't get decapitated or murdered or all the things that you hear about in the media. I do think, however, that the people who are targeted for those things are people who are involved with the cartel. So if, as long as you don't get yourself involved with anything dealing with the cartel, whether you're moving money for them or you're moving drugs for them, you'll be okay. However, there are some areas in Mexico, right, that I personally would not live in, like certain areas of Zacatecas, I probably wouldn't live in. Um, certain areas of the state of Michoacán, I probably wouldn't live in. But I can tell you that 100% of our customers are not looking at those areas anyway. Like they don't even know that they exist on a map. Uh, so I, I don't really have a concern about that. I do think though that you have to practice the same common sense that you would in any country, right? Don't leave your bag unattended. Don't leave your credit card unattended. Um, don't splash wealth, right? Like if you have a big wad of money and you're paying for small services, take out only what you need and then the rest make sure that you keep it in a safe place. Like things like that that just really make you a target. Don't don't be drunk, right, at three in the morning on an Uber and make yourself a target of somebody who could possibly be uh, taken advantage of. So just things like that are really common sense for anybody in any country, not only Mexico. Yeah, the same goes for many places in the United States. Uh, you know, I do remember, I don't know what is the ranking right now, but I do remember uh, I used to live very close to Savannah, Georgia, a 15 minutes drive to Savannah, Georgia. And it was the second, back in the day, uh, it was the second uh, highest crime rate. Uh, I used to go to Savannah almost every weekend. I love walking next to, it's called the River, uh, River Street, beautiful River Street, all beautiful traditional old houses, southern style. Uh, I never suffered anything. You know, it was it's a beautiful place, even though that was the highest rate rated uh, crime place, like, like the second the second highest. Yeah. Or or you know, there, there are places in the states that you don't want to live in. There are places in Costa Rica you don't want to live in. There are places in Panama you don't want to live in. The same thing goes with Mexico. And this leads me to my next question. You know, what are the places that you would recommend? You know, let's say two, two or three places that you feel are a good fit for most of the expat community who is looking to to relocate to Mexico? This is hard. Um, it's such a big I know. country, right? It's such a big country. There are so many cities I would recommend. Um, yeah, that's a very hard one. It just depends on the person. Like, do you want to live on the mountains? Do you want to live on the beach? Do you want to live in a city? Do you want to live in a town? Uh, do you want temperate weather year round? Or do you like more rain? Uh, so there's, it's really hard. I would say my personal three, like me. But, yeah, you know, I, lo I love, I love your, I love yours because you are like you're a Mexican. You know your country. Yeah. So what is your personal choice? Uh, and, and then I, perhaps I kind of like a secret hidden gem. I, I love to have that. Okay, yeah, I love Guadalajara. I think that it's kind of, and I, I'm a city girl. I love cities. Um, I love visiting small towns but I would never live there. So I just, I, that's how I am, right? I love cities. I love having a million events to go to and, and a thousand restaurants to, to be able to try. And like, you know, from the taco stand to like, you know, a mid-range place. So I like the variety. Um, so my top favorites are Querétaro, obviously Mexico City, that's where I'm from. I think Mexico City is not what people think. It's not this, it is a very, very big city, but every neighborhood has everything you need. So every neighborhood is kind of like its own city. I love it. Uh, Querétaro has really nice weather. It's also protected from basically any natural disasters because it's kind of in a valley, so it doesn't really get affected by earthquakes like Mexico City does. It doesn't have the hurricanes that maybe Puerto Vallarta does. Um, so it's, it's great in that aspect. It is on a very high elevation, so people have to consider that if you have heart problems or you have a sensitivity to high elevations. Mexico City is also high elevation. Um, and then the third one, I think, would be, uh, I absolutely love Playa del Carmen. I think Playa del Carmen. Yeah. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, it's obviously not a really big city, the bigger city is Cancun, but I think Playa del Carmen has a really nice uh, vibe to it. If you were going to live on a beach, I think Playa del Carmen is a great place to live. I think a hidden gem that a lot of people don't consider is Mazatlan. Um, Mazatlan. Mazatlan in the state of Sinaloa. I think the reason that it doesn't get, or not, I don't know why it doesn't get talked about much, but you always hear about Puerto Vallarta, you hear about Tulum, you hear about Playa del Carmen, you hear about, you know, Los Cabos. 
um, or La Paz or Rosarito and Sonora, you hear about all these other towns and you never really hear about Mazatlan. And Mazatlan is a really, really cool city. It's on the beach. Um, it has some of the best seafood that you'll probably ever have. It's a big fishing port, so they have a lot of shrimp, a lot of fish for about $1,000 a month. Whereas in Puerto Vallarta, close to the beach, you're looking at like $1,500, $2,000 a month. Um, you know, so just to give you a comparison, it can be significantly more expensive than Puerto Vallarta. I do love Mexico. You know, I, I, love, I spend at least three times every year. I'm going next week, by the way. Mexico oh, nice. City. Uh, oh, great. Every time I spend time in Mexico, I fall in love with the food. In Mexico City is the one that I know kind of like the most. And every little area has got its own little taste. And also San Miguel de Allende. It's, it's about Gorgeous. two hours, maybe two hours and a half from, from Mexico City. About, about three, yeah. Three hours. <laughs> I don't remember, but I did this. I spent a few days there. I, I, just, I just love it. I just love the I just love the place, and there are many, many, many. I mean, Mexico is a huge country, and we're talking about, you know, what are the places you know that are safe or unsafe. Uh, Mexico is so big that if it's an area where it's a hot area, it's not as safe. You know, it feels like that's in another country. It's so huge. I mean, I just can't really explain how big is the country. It's huge. And it varies um, so much from the north to the south. I mean, the culture, the food, the language. Even they have different, you know dialects and not dialects but different lingo and different words and you know, even the way people pronounce things. You know, I so, want to ask you. I want to ask you. You know, how people get in touch with you? What is it that we can do? Uh, if somebody is looking at this, they want to have more information. They want to have somebody, you know, help them through this process of relocating to Mexico. What is the best way to reach out to you or to connect with you? Yeah, I would say go to the website MexicoRelocationGuide.com. I have a lot of free resources. If you go to MexicoRelocationGuide.com, you you scroll to the you know middle part of the website, um, you'll see there's a big thing that says free resources. I have free videos. I have all kinds of different blog posts. Um, I have a page that shows you different rentals in different areas, so you get an idea. There are examples, so you get an idea of what the true cost of living would be in that area. And then of course we offer our complete Mexico relocation guide, which is essentially an online course that gives people a step-by-step -step plan for moving to Mexico. And then on top of that, we give them a directory of our recommended contacts that we have personally vetted. Um, and we have everything from immigration facilitators to realtors to private drivers, relocation tour guides who can show you a city. Um, I mean, we have a lot of different contacts for a lot of different things. See, yeah. and of course you mentioned the tour and I, and I just want to talk a little bit about this uh, because I think it's important. I, this is important because a lot of people just make the call of moving into a particular location, but they haven't even visited the location first. Yeah. So I think before anybody move abroad, I, I think before you move to any other city within the U.S., you at least have to visit and spend some time, uh, especially if now if you're moving internationally, you're moving abroad. I think a tour can answer a lot of these questions, at least give you, you know, your first experience of what to expect living in a lot of these cities absolutely with no agenda to sell you any real estate too because that's important right if you go a lot of real estate companies offer this and of course you have to sit through like a sales presentation at the end of like you know all the places they have for sale and you might not be in the market to be buying a house you might just want to you're serious so it's it's important uh mariana has this service available uh to set up a a tour for you to visit different areas and i think our time is up so i'd like to thank you for this opportunity uh we love working with you and i'll be sharing your contact with a lot of our, a lot of our customers if you want more information please visit mexicorelocationguide.com also visit our youtube you know this is how i found you i found you through your youtube and you put some beautiful videos with a lots of information about beautiful places in mexico and i really appreciate what you're doing for the expat community and i think people should go and check on your youtube as well it's a lot of information out there i can really tell you put some love into this uh, oh, so i appreciate i appreciate you thank you so much our time is up thank you yeah. thank you bye bye